Afternoon, everybody. Or except if you're uh, in the States or anywhere, morning, whatever. Right, this is through my trial and error over 30 odd years. I've got a book coming out, should be out in uh, another month or something. It'll be uh, sold on Amazon. But that's the, that was my rough coffee. Our little is doing at the moment. He's putting everything together. I'm on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Everything I do weekly wise, that's on the allotments, whatever to do with gardening, I do a weekly blog so you can have a nose on me. I give talks all over the UK. Main talk obviously is on composting. I do raised beds and no dig cultivation and the year on the plot, but I'll do anyway. Jersey, that was a good one. They couldn't understand the word down there. Because of the situation with it, what we're in, I've, I've started doing uh, talks online. So if anybody's interested in any garden club, I did one in Ontario, Canada last week. That was my first one. My claim to fame is uh, talking to BBC Gardeners Worldwide, obviously on composting. I did that for three or four years. But even better than that, I, give a, I did a talk to Mayor Village Hall in Staffordshire. And it was here in Mayor Village Hall that Charles Darwin became first interested in the effects of earthworms. So for me to give a talk in the same village hall that he uh, frequented, that'll take some beating earthworm wise. This is our local show, Colligan Garden Club. I'm chairman of that, chairman of Abbey Road Allotments. But I like growing uh, exhibition veg, fruit, flowers, love me, fruit and me, glad you have a life. But I want to get the best out of what I do. That was a couple of years ago at uh, Charles place, Prince Charles, we ended up at Highgrove and I've come second with a, a good specimen of elite there. I'm all raised beds on my one and a half plots. I don't dig, I haven't dug for 30 odd years. That's why worms were invented, use them. I work with nature, I've learned to work with nature. Nature will win every time. If you work with it, you get on better. Do you like that? I did that photo on myself. Tough to be fair. Hmm, wish I could do that. I can't get away with it at the moment. Right, two ways you can compost. You can use hot compost or worms. If you've got a proper hot compost bin, that's a metal rod, moving your hand down slowly, you will feel the warmth from the rod itself. That's in the middle of the heap. Meaning if you're hot compost, compost, you've got to turn it, which is only in the middle that's cooking. But I want worms. Branding worms, tiger worms, compost worms. How do I start off? The time I saved me uh, egg boxes, lure rolls, whatever. Nothing coloured, nothing glossy, just in case. The old man, old man went in the hospital, had his ticket on. He went visiting. He said, go and empty that for us, our kid. So I emptied it. I thought, I ain't throwing that away. So I squashed it, shoved it down my underpants and smuggled it out. Paper mashy, use it with a natural product. End of the week, which is Monday for me, composting day, I've got half a carrier, carrier bag full of carbon. This is how I started my composting methods, leaf mould, off smoke, and garden compost. This one was full of all smoke, carpet lid on top. This was me doing a weekly moisture check. Put the carpet back, if I see a worm, I know it's moist. If they start drying off, they're gonna clear off down below. I'm okay, so I'll put the carpet back. If I don't see them, give them some water. I'm now going to cross shredder. Obviously, get me a paper and whatever smaller. And through trial and error again, the missus used to do loads of reading. I always read the back page out anyway, so I don't know where it ended. But what I'm after now is the oldest paperback book I can get hold of. You can see that's old by the colour of the paper. And if you smell it, you can smell that the paper is breaking down already. It's telling you, compost me. I make wine with that. Everything uh, I grow on the plot, go drink the wine. This is lots of vodka, I like the cider. I exhibit wine and I use, use them as bribes and thank yous. So this is our local charity shop. I bribe the wenches in there to save me all the old paperback books. And that's what they do. If I'm down the plot and I want to piddle, I'll do it on the compost heap. If I can't reach, the rhubarb gets it. This container, I'll keep up the greenhouse back of the garden. I've got a good size back garden as well. 
So if I want to piddle in the greenhouse, I'll piddle in there and say that. The Brenda next door has caught me three times now putting the washing out. I just lost now, but it was 98 as used to be. And then somebody invented these and bought these out. Excellent. These come out about 14 years ago. The government bought them out. They can get people composting. You're going to add three per household, 330 litre or uh, 220 litre. Fair the day one is, so I had these as well. So I've got two for leaf mould, three for com uh, four for composting. Because I want compost 12 months of the year, because I'm using it as a growing medium, as well as a top dressing. I want compost during the winter, so I'll cover my bins in carpet. I want to look after them. I don't want them clearing off. In the summer, I don't want them to cook, so I'll wallop in white emulsion. That repels the heat and the light. And then, uh, luckily for me, a roll of plas white plastic fell off the back of a wagon, so I'll go use that. Now, this is some of what I've done extra this year, so I'm still learning as I'm going along. The carpet, I've just done this last week. I put carpet round them and then I've also put black horticultural plastic round. So that'll absorb the heat and the sun when we get it. Even better on winter. Right, this is the hardest I work on the plot because I don't dig anymore. Sun, uh, Monday morning for me. Edge shears and a bucket. I chop everything up. This is kitchen scraps and garden scraps. The smaller the ingredient, the quicker the breakdown process. I'll get an empty compost bag. Uh, I empty what I've just chopped into the bag and put a double handful of my uh, chopped up paper, glue rolls, whatever. And then I do that until I've chopped everything. I'm then mixing everything up. I'm doing an extra worm for the worm, worms again. I ain't even going to look for it. I'm mixing it for them. So that's what that lot looks like. Now I've got extra compost ingredients to go into the top of there. These are protected by a bit of carpet to take the carpet off. There's also plastic under that. This is to keep the frost and the rain off. And these are the other ingredients. This is what I call heaven. Biggest pile of osmuck you've ever seen in your life. Whatever manure you use, that's where I get my words from. There's my mate, King Canute, on the top. Good thing about this stuff, you get the liquid runoff when it's been raining. And I was up there yesterday getting this. That's what I use as an activator. So a double and full of all those extra ingredients are put in with me a bag and it is mixed up again. So the one on the right is the chopped and mixed kitchen and garden waste and the one on the left is uh, mixed with everything else. So it's, it's nearly ready now. every day gone in the bin yet. Yeah, today that's as it is. Two inch layer in the bin and then water it. Oops. Well excited there. This is my liquid osmuck. That's what I give them a brew with. Just a cap full to a gallon bucket. Once I have filled the bin, which takes me about three or four weeks, I then put a carpet lid on the top of that as well. And as that drops down, exactly the same as me, large bins, that carpet will drop down with it. So you haven't got that cold void from the lid to the surface. Once it's full, I'll put the date on the top. That was ready within two months, I thought. I, I want it quicker than that. How can I do it? I'm going to add extra worms. Fishing tackle shop, get a good dollop of worms off them. I'm probably about four quid now. I'm going to throw them in and they're going to, that's going to break down even quicker. So I've got my leaf mould, I've got some that's ready and what's in use. You've got to keep these moist. Carpet uh, lifted off top again, not can see me worms, so I know it's moist. It's this moisture check. Doing a moisture check one week, I took the lid off and all the worms was around the lid. I was trying to get out. I thought, Gordon Bennett, what's up with them? I've never put lime in because I've got me eggshells. That's always uh, worked for my lime, crushed eggshells. And it ended up, it was because I was getting extra ki kitchen uh, scraps. From an old folks home and it was these what they, they was putting in these will break down in the compost but not quickly and not by worms because they'll get all on one mine broken down quick since i've kept them out i've had no problem whatsoever doing another moisture check no worms whatsoever i thought gordon bennett this is supposed to be easy and this little chap had come in and nicked them all with the claws on him little horror so i had to get rid of him 
and I'll get rid of him, or not get rid of him, or I'll stop him getting in. Chicken wire on the bottom of my bins. I've took the bin off so you can see the mole run underneath. Now all he's got to do is lie on his back with his mouth open and the worms will drop through the chicken wire. I thought, right, you little person. So now when I'm starting from scratch again, I've got an empty bin. I first of all put two foot of straw in. Then I start putting my compost ingredients in. By the time my compost is broken down and ready, that straw is still intact. It hasn't broken down. You don't get no worms. I'll beat him. Obviously, because the um, bin tapers, I've got different size uh, carpet lids. Right, through trial and error again, because I've got my carpet lid on top, I'll put another carpet lid on top. In fact, there's three on now. But you've got to keep these carpet lids moist. And that in between these two car uh, two bits of carpets, it is an ideal breeding ground for worms. There's my extra worms. I ain't gonna pay for any anymore. So if I've just chopped some of it up, I'll pick them three out, put them on the uh, dustbin lid, empty my contents, then I shake them worms on top of that. Perfect. The National Vet Society was only impressing me composting methods. They made me uh, made a DVD on it. So that was my dirty first dirty film. That's using my compost 100% uh, as a grey medium. White thick roots tells me that it's working. Which it was. I'm getting into the soft food web now. Well, it's working with nature in it. I needed it in writing that my compost was good because I was going up to, to Dragon's Den and my composting methods. If I can do it, the government and the councils can do it. I'm still fighting them. The only place at the time was Labourstow Park Laboratories, uh, la Laboratories down in uh, Hampshire. I had to send them a sample of the compost and the DVD. And there's three lab technicians. I asked them to watch the DVD so I knew what ingredients I was putting in. And then let me know what I'm going to take out or add. Bacterial activity, excellent. Fungal activity, excellent. Fungal biomass, exceptional. Nothing to take out, nothing to add, which I knew anyway, but I just needed in writing. And if you make good compost, this is how big they do in the States. I went to the first compost tea seminar in the UK, trying to get our farmers to into compost teas. But uh, if you make good compost like I do, then you make your compost tea, and that's what I do do. I mean, mate Gareth Hopcroft, he's up, uh, is he Sheffield, I think he is. He's into his uh, bacteria and fungi, his teas. And I sent him my compost and uh, a sample of me compost teas, and that's a rotty, rotty furry fan. He was over the moon with that. This is Dan Morven with the National Vet Society trying to get the kids into uh, growing. These kids are our future gardeners. Gardening should have come on the National uh, School curriculum two years ago. It hasn't. We're going to come unstuck. Caslon Primary School just up the road. I took the kids uh, gardening club up there for five years. Did a full allotment on the school grounds. And the, the kids was that iPad before we started the class. I sent them out collecting molehills for us. They come back, I could cope with them then. Because of course, you can't sell a date under trees anymore. Every new influx of kids I had, I've never had a kid who's had rhubarb dipped in sugar. Because the parents ain't been gardeners. Everything I did with the school, I put it on uh, YouTube to get all the schools involved. And somebody said you shouldn't put the kids' photo on. I said, oh, I have to. I've got permission off the head, which clears the school. I've got permission off the parents, which clears the kids. That was for uh, Molly's birthday, so I made her a birthday cake out of an osmop and candle. If they behaved, we'd have a water fight at the end. Right, if you remember earlier on, odd composting. This is my own compost 100% with blanched leaves. And the seedlings that are coming through there are tomato seedlings. In May 2, on co uh, odd compost, he top dresses all his beds. He has exactly the same thing, tomato seeds coming through. Nothing kills off tomato seeds. Right, this is a trial I was doing. This, this uh, obviously, there's still lumps in my compost. This is after three weeks. So if I'm using it as a growing medium, I'm going to take the worms out. The best compost we can get in the UK for the professionals is Leamington M3 compost. That's nearly 10 quid a bag. 
So from two ceilings from scratch, the one on the left was M3, and the one on the right was uh, my compost. As you can see, mine is on par with theirs. This is looking at the M3, there's mine with lumps in. Right, the M3 compost, if I upend him, nice white roots. If I upend mine, I have got thicker, whiter roots. With my lumps, if I water the other compost, the roots have got to take in what they want, whether it's feed or water as it goes through the compost. With my compost, because I've got lumps in there, they hang on to everything, and that's how it works. So I've used my compost as a top dressing on my raised beds. Because it's full of worms, they do my digging. I'll just spread it out, water it, and then cover it with the weed suppressant. And in 10 days, it's ready to use again. Extras which worms like I've found out over the years, Polyjose, the Chapman from Tesco, they love it. Basalt rock dust. This is volcanic rock dust. I get, the, get that by the time for our trading sheds. But it's uh, volcanic. If it's volcanic, it's got trace elements and minerals, which rain on the top. Beautiful stuff. Topsoil, you've got to put topsoil in the compost. One pinch will give you millions of good bacteria and fungi. And the best topsoil, mold hills. When I'm doing my talks in the sticks, get there, I always get there early, traffic around it, and I've always got a bag in the booth. If I see a field and a mold hill, I go and borrow them. Uh, spent mushroom compost to get that by this time for our training sheds. Beautiful stuff. This was took uh, Monday. So I've just chopped everything up, I lift the carpets back, and you can see the work, that's what I've done in a week. So I then put my next dollop on. And this was yesterday, I was back up to heaven. Not too, yeah, not too long now, we're uh, here. I was back up to heaven, got me some more uh, liquid osmoc straw, because I use that as top dressing my raised beds. One disadvantage with the raised beds that dry out, or whatever I plant out, I then top dress with straw. That keeps in the moisture and the warmth. This is our show again, Boston Day that is. That's Ray Poole who used to uh, judge the flowers. It's Mrs. Huge into the cakes and the jams and the wine, except I never spit the wine out to drunk it all. And it was Kaylide. So it now brings a, a grandson, so he can take it on. And that's me on uh, nature, working away with a straw was put under my bin. And that's from my raised bed because there's no disturbance. Oh, that was good timing, Kieran, eh? Was that? And that's it, folks. Hope you've enjoyed some of it and learned something.